Here are a few things to think about before you build a stairway using railroad ties. And the first thing you're going to need to consider is the actual length of the railroad tie, the size of it, and uh, how it's going to uh, fit in with your stairway. So I did some uh, research and a railroad tie is 7 inches by 9 inches and uh, 8 foot long. And if you were going to have a four foot wide stairway, you would need to somehow cut this in half. And I would imagine most homeowners aren't going to have a big saw that will cut this in half or that could actually be quite a chore for you. you might want to run something at the rental yard um, or ask somebody if they can uh, cut it for you. But uh, if you cut it in half, you're going to have two four footers. You cut it into thirds, you're going to have three 32 inchers. A, the minimum width for a stairway is 36 inches. So if you're going to build a stairway that you're not, you don't really care about if it's going to meet local building codes, you might be able to do something like this. Just kind of throwing that out there. And again, I have more information on building codes at the website also. And you just click on the building, go to the website, homebuildingandrepairs.com, and then you'll see a design tab at the top. Click on that and then go to building codes and then stairs. So for building a set of stairs like this, you know, if you're going to build it uh, using the railroad ties as each individual step, you're going to need to keep in mind that you're going to be dealing with 7-inch risers and 9-inch treads. The minimum distance for a stair tread for residential stairs is 10 inches for most uh, cases. And um, so again, this... This type of stairway is not something that, uh, uh, you know, if you build something like this and you're going to try and get it passed by an inspector, there are a lot of problems with it um, that I could see. And again, I'll try and address those as we go through the video. The first problem, of course, will be the nine inch wide stair tread. And of course, there are a few ways you could uh, fix that also. You know, you could actually pull these forward. So if you space them at 10 inches, you're going to have a gap on the bottom. But that gap can be filled with wood, which you'll see here in a little bit. Basically, um, there's not a lot of, it's not rocket science here. You're simply going to be digging out an area and flattening it off and then setting the railroad ties on top of it whether you're going to use gravel or some type of a backfill material um, that will be up to you and of course it'll depend upon what you're working with also and you, once you have it you're just going to set it in one at a time and work your way up and just keep working your way up um, until you get to the top now before you even consider getting started with a project like this you need to figure out if it's actually going to work and uh, one of the ways you're going to uh, use to figure that out will be to figure out the rise and the run. And I will put a link here to a video that I have um, for that um, that will be helpful. There's actually made about three videos that will help. But you can see here where if you have a stairway like this and you have a grade like this and uh, your soil on your hillside is sloping perfectly, then you're not going to have a problem. However, that isn't going to be the case if your hillside is a little taller and the stairway needs to sink into it. You could see here where all this dirt's just going to cave in and uh, this part isn't going to work. Something like this is going to work. And I would actually suggest to lower the soil um, at least an inch. That'd be the minimum. You'd be surprised at how much debris will actually, it'll start raining, the stuff will start washing down here. You'll get like a little uh, area where the leaves and the debris will start to collect and then pretty soon you have a nice river running through your stairway and down the stairway. Um, so you're gonna have to also take that into consideration. You know, you might need to set up some type of a drainage system or lower it even further or do something that most of us don't do, um, actually maintain the stairway you see that there's a problem with it, then you need to redesign it and adjust accordingly. Here's another suggested method you could do, kind of like I was saying. Dig away some of the dirt, 
build um, some type of a channel there that uh, where the debris and the water will flow down and kind of like this right here I'm throwing this out there you know you're not going to want to have this at uh, more than a 45 degree angle less than a 45 degree angle if you possibly can this should give you a better idea what I'm talking about when I'm suggesting less than a 45 degree angle something that's going to be that won't be as steep Next up, let's take a look at how the stairway will be affected if we have a steeper hillside. And um, you could see here that this probably isn't going to work. You know, we're not going to have a nice uh, corners like this on our hillside and the dirt's uh, not going to stay um, perfectly flat here if we have a situation like this. And of course, something like this probably won't work either, but I went ahead and moved the treads forward. I left the soil the same so you could see how far I moved the treads or the railroad ties here. And um, we end up with a six and three quarter inch deep stair tread. This is not going to be a safe stairway or as safe of a stairway if we had more of the step to step on. Remember this distance here, the minimum is usually going to be 10 inches for most residential stairways and the maximum rise by the way for this is going to be seven and three quarter inches but we're not going to have to worry about that too much with our railroad ties being seven inches now let's take a look at a smaller slope something that uh, might even be about uh, 10 degrees and if that's the case you might need to add more of the railroad ties to make your steps a little wider so this is just depending upon the slope and the design of the stairs. So this is all stuff you need to figure out beforehand. So you could actually, you might have a slope that is only about six degrees or let's just say four degrees where you're going to need three of these um, railroad ties to make it work. Now, if you need to make the risers a little taller than seven inches, you can always do that by shaping the soil accordingly. So instead of shaping the soil to where it's going to be a little lower here so that the railroad tie, this corner, uh, lines up with this corner here, you'll simply um, cut, the, cut and shape the soil so that you can uh, have seven and three quarter inch risers. Now I threw some gravel in here. You might want to use gravel underneath all of this. That just depends on you. Sometimes gravel is going to give you a little uh, more stability. It's not going to erode as, uh, and I say erode, it just all depends. Erosion underneath these is going to be a problem if it's not designed right. And the gravel, if you don't design it right, it's not going to do you any good anyway. But I wanted to give you an idea here. If you just have the soil here without anything blocking it like a piece of wood then the soil is going to uh, eventually fall on top of the back of the tread here and or the step and eventually you're going to have uh, erosion in the back here and if you get enough erosion let's say like from here to here then then the uh, step right here could actually start rocking on the pivot point here so this might not be a good idea and then gravel, probably going to be a little better of an idea to use, maybe some three quarter inch gravel. But, you know, why not just put a board in the back here and uh, block everything off to uh, prevent it from, you know, ending up with any of these problems here. So, and this is kind of what I meant with this board. I was going to give you an idea. If you need to extend one of these railroad ties you could always attach a board to the back or even to the front of the railroad tie probably going to be better to attach it to the back but if you wanted some type of a nosing then uh, you might want to attach something to the front if i added a two by four to a nine inch wide railroad tie that's going to give me a ten and a half inch long step which might meet my local building codes and make my building inspector happy now it's going to be a little easier if you need a smaller riser height and I believe here I lowered this two inches so we would have a five inch tall riser. You're just simply going to shape the soil accordingly. 
you dig a little more dirt out and of course the bottom step is going to have to have a little more soil removed so that uh, that step can work out with the risers i can't tell you how many times i come to a stairway and they start a railroad tie um, stairway with the one one of them just right on top of the ground and then the next one is two or three inches shorter so remember you're going to have to adjust accordingly for something like this um, if you do figure out that you need a six inch rise or a five inch riser then that's going to apply to the entire stairway another thing i need to point out is that the railroad ties themselves might be warped bowed twisted um, crown you name it they might not be flat and if they aren't flat they aren't going to work well for a stairway so if you have something where you have one of them that's got a bow in one direction and you flatten it out on one side let's just say you're using two of them and you flatten it out and you get this side nice and straight and you come over here and you got a half inch gap you know it's it from the from the top of this one to the back of this one um, you know you've got a trip hazard and a safety issue and of course this is the reason why I think most building inspectors aren't going to want to see this it's just not flat enough I mean if you were to get you know if you were to run this through a sawmill and get them flat you know and now you're probably affecting the exterior coating on them and they might not last as long and for those of you who think that uh, you know railroad ties and telephone poles um, termites don't eat them I actually have a um, some railroad ties I took out of my front yard um, that uh, were eaten up by termites and uh, they did a pretty good job at tearing it up so uh, these are telephone poles I'm sure the railroad ties if they're treated the same way then you're going to end up with uh, the same possibility so straight lumber going to be a problem um, also soil settling if you're shaping the soil so that you can set the railroad ties on top of it and um, you need to fill some soil or you're installing something underneath the railroad ties maybe it's soil from another part of your property you know maybe you need to build the area up before you can put your stairway in it then you might be dealing with soil settlement issues in the future these um, railroad ties might be moving and if that's the case it might not be that big of a deal to fix something like this lift the railroad tie up shove some soil underneath it and uh, you could be good for another five years next up on the list let's figure out a way to prevent these steps from moving the last thing you want to do will be to have your railroad ties move at all while someone is walking up and down your stairway now that can be done by installing a couple of brackets uh, building hardware angle brackets do not put them in the center um, if you do it could be a trip hazard try to keep them off to the sides and these are just going to be simple angle brackets I drew this one in here you can put your own in there are all sorts of different angle brackets um, some of them you can use screws um, you know I don't know if you'd be able to bolt through these if that would be a, a good idea but lag screws would be good and uh, you know they have longer skinnier ones all different uh, kinds and I do want to point out that something like this if you do end up with some of the soil eroding from uh, underneath the front section of a step or you have soil that is starting to um, compact um, because it wasn't compacted properly when you built the stairway then this might actually be enough to prevent it from moving enough to where it creates a safety hazard so keep that in mind the most common method for installing these and preventing them from moving is by simply drilling a hole through the entire railroad tie and then driving a piece of rebar through it so if you're going to use half inch rebar drill a half inch hole or even a hole that's nine sixteenths of an inch a little larger and then drive the rebar through it and into the soil and this usually seems to be a pretty effective method another method I don't see this used very often but uh, maybe just simply drive a stake into the ground or a couple of stakes in the ground 
and simply attach it to the railroad tie with screws or nails or whatever you feel will be appropriate. Now you can always use metal stakes and treated lumber if you want the stakes to last longer. Um, is it a big deal if you use um, regular construction standard lumber? Not if you don't mind popping these babies out of the ground every once in a while and replacing them. And of course, sometimes you might not need to replace them or you might not need to replace them if the um, stairway isn't moving. If the steps aren't moving and these uh, stakes have rotted and uh, you've been using the stairway, then they, they obviously uh, have done their job and kept the stairway, held the stairway together long enough to, um, you know, all the soil would have been compacted and uh, it's not going to be moving anymore. So hope this helps. If it does, you know what to do. Hit the old thumbs up button. And um, I am going to, at the end of the video here, have some playlists to other videos that uh, you might want to check out for exterior, for building exterior stairs and deck stairs, of course.